On the southern coast of Cambodia lies Gap, a small serene town that whispers tales of its former grandeur and beckons visitors with its untouched beauty. Once known as the Riviera of the East, Gap was a glamorous retreat for the elite. But today, it stands as a forgotten gem waiting to be rediscovered. AI wrote that. Anyway, so it's that YouTube. Welcome to Gap. Today's video, I'm going to give you kind of a quick and dirty update of the current state of Gap and whether or not I think it's worth it for you guys to visit. So first off, let's talk about the history of Gap. Established as a seaside resort in 1908, it quickly became a favorite gateway for French and Cambodian elites. Majestic villas dotted the landscape and the town was a symbol of leisure and prosperity. Uh, you can even see the remnants of those villas which were abandoned during the Khmer Rouge invasion. That is actually one of the things I like coming here to check out is these abandoned buildings. They're really kind of neat. If you're into that type of stuff, I don't know if you can actually go inside any of them. Uh, you could probably ask, but definitely don't just try going on the land by yourself because it is owned uh, private property, but really need to look at. If you're into history, especially Cambodian history and abandoned buildings, it's a good reason to come here. So this is the White Lady statue. It's probably the most iconic monument here in Gap. And apparently the story is that of a lady who's waiting for her husband to come home. I think he went on a fishing trip or something and he never came back. But anyway, let's talk about the current state of things here in Gap. And I've been here several times now over, oh gosh, past eight years or so. And uh, watching it go from what it was back when I first visited to where it is now. Well, let me tell you. First off, uh, at some point, I believe maybe about five years ago, they started rapidly expanding some of the land out in front of the crab market, which in my opinion kind of destro destroyed what I originally liked about the crab market. And that was because the boats would come right up to the crab market and they would unload their catch right there. But with how they expanded it out, they can't do that anymore. And speaking of the crab market, that's one of the, I guess like three things that Gap is known for. The crab market, the uh, peppercorn farms, and the national park itself, which I've actually never been to. So I can't really comment on that. Uh, the crab market is really the main draw for most people. And if you're not into seafood, then you probably aren't gonna be interested in coming to Gap. But if you love seafood like me, then Gap is probably the destination in Cambodia uh, for most people. Uh, this area is known for its peppercorn farms and there are a ton of them all throughout Gap. If you're into uh, like agriculture and you wanna see a little bit about what makes this area famous, then definitely suggest a visit to one of the peppercorn farms. You can taste something that's truly like, I guess one of a kind here in Cambodia because uh, peppercorns are a protected uh, agricultural product and it's designated, it has a designation for it which I don't remember off the top of my head. Much like cognac, uh, compote peppers can only be grown in this region. Next up, let's talk about the beach. The beach is another draw mainly for visitors from the city and for foreigners, I don't know. Um, take a look for yourself. Now honestly it's not the most beautiful beach but Khmer people they still seem to love it. You know there aren't too many options for uh, pristine white sand beaches with crystal clear waters here. The only one that I can actually think of is uh, Koh Rong and Koh Rong Samlon. Uh, those beaches are beautiful but I will say that they are packed with foreigners. Here in Cap, you're gonna find mostly locals coming from the surrounding area and from uh, Phnom Penh City. It does get crowded on the weekends, so uh, be forewarned if you're coming here on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the beach is small and it is extremely packed. And with that, it does get a little bit dirty because, well, I, you know, I hate to say this, but a lot of Khmer people aren't the most, uh, we have a tendency to uh, come in large groups and create a mess. The waters themselves do seem pretty clean. Um, it's just not as blue, mainly because the sand is kind of dirty. You know, it's not really the most picturesque beach. Next up, let's talk about the Gap Crab Market, and that's 
the biggest draw for most people, uh, tourists and locals. They all come here for the crab market. And at the crab market, you're gonna find a pretty decent selection of really fresh seafood. I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that it's not a huge selection. Not like you would find in, actually uh, in Phnom Penh, in the central market, you're gonna find a larger selection a larger variety of seafood than you're gonna find here in Keb, surprisingly. But the seafood here in Keb is extremely fresh, especially the crabs, it comes right off the boats and into the market where it's sold to buyers. That's one of the reasons why I decided to stay here in Keb, not only to give you guys an update on what it's like here right now, but also to have some crabs because I love crabs. The thing that this market is most known for is the blue swimmer crabs stir fried with the green peppercorns. And that's what I'm gonna have today, but also gonna have uh, something else I've never had before, which is the stone crab, which is much bigger and apparently tastier. So let's see which one tastes better. All right, we've got about an eighth of a kilo or 0.8 kilo of the stone crab and then a kilo of the blue sumer crabs. The blue sumer crabs I had stir fried with the green peppercorns and the stone crab I got steamed. Then I have that with the uh, taktrai kakong. All said and done, cost about uh, right around $20 for this. Kind of expensive if you ask me, but it is a lot of food. This is probably enough for at least two, three people. Okay, so we got <coughs> the, this is the stone crab. In Cambodian, this is known as the Kdam Tmal, which is stone crab. They kind of look like mud crabs to me, so I'm not entirely sure if that's accurate. But there we go, we got some good white, I guess that's shoulder meat. Let's go in the, uh, the tray kong. Mm. But let's try it without the tray kong. Wow. It's not as it's not as sweet as the blue crabs, but it's almost got like a buttery taste to it. Very delicious. I don't have a crab cracker. But I do have my handy dandy letterman. Oi! <laughs> oh wow. Look at that. Mm. The texture is way different. It's just a lot firmer than the blue crabs. Mm. Let's switch over to the blue crabs. And these guys are very, very small. Tutumoy. What I like to do with this is get a bit of the green peppercorn. You take your blue summer crab. Like that, and your papa, green peppercorn. Mm. I forgot something very, very important. Gansberg. Boom! Moi kapong. I'll keep that for later. Okay, guys. Cheers to everybody out there in the Telegram group. If you're not part of the group or if you're interested in joining the group, Go ahead and click on one of Campbell Vlogs links. It's actually a Campbell Vlogs group. That's basically where I hang out. But anyway, cheers you guys. Let me go back to the stone crab. Let's open it up, see what's inside. Ooh, ooh, look at that, juice. Look at that juice. Wow. Let's put a little tatray kong. Uh oh, that's my uh, anti-monkey weapon there. Be very careful of the monkeys here. They're very aggressive when they see food. All right, we've got the head fat soup mixture. We're gonna go ahead and drink this. Mmm. 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 That stone crab is amazing. You don't even really need anything. It's so flavorful. But the blue silver crab stir fried like this. I think more than anything, it's a stir fry sauce that makes this even tastier. It's so small, you just take the whole half, bite into it, and suck.
And you do get the little shell bit, but they're so thin. You can really just eat them if you want. Here in Cambodia, that's how we eat our crabs. Oh yeah, this one has eggs. Whoa, mama. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at the mother load there. Ooh, losing all the good juice there. Mm, that's what we're looking for, boys. The egg. Ooh. Mm. Mmm. 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 Oh wow. That's... It's very... Um, it's like a little bit mushy, but in a good way. And you get kind of like chalky, minerally taste from the egg. It's slightly bitter, slightly sweet. Yeah, it doesn't sound the most appetizing, but trust me. Not only is this good, it's good for your libido. Okay, so what was my verdict? Was it the blue crabs or the stone crab? Which one was better? Um, I'm gonna say I still do love blue crab. They're really good eating. The meat is really sweet. But the stone crabs, stone crabs, I've never had crabs like that before. The texture was just completely different and it almost had like kind of a buttery taste to it. So I really enjoyed the stone crab. If you guys are coming down to visit, Get, get yourself some stone crabs, they're delicious. Also oysters, the oyster here, they're super fresh and you know, don't be scared. Sonny has a thing about oysters. Sonny from the Best Ever Food Review Show. He won't eat raw oysters ever since he went to some oyster farm and they told him the statistics of um, dying from eating an oyster. But you know what, if you love oysters, I would say go ahead and risk, take the risk. It's very slim chance that you're gonna die from uh, eating bad oysters, but the risk is still there, so just be be warned. Um, as far as the crab market itself, um, you know, if you're looking for a large variety of seafood, you're gonna be better off served in uh, Phnom Penh, but the seafood isn't gonna be as fresh. And on the weekends, again, like I said before, it does get extremely crowded. Uh, it is nuts in there. There's vendors yelling at you to buy something and all the people like kind of crammed into this uh, into this really tight market, especially right where all the seafood is. It's very difficult to bargain to get the good deals on seafood here, uh, especially nowadays and especially on the weekends. And um, you know, to be honest, like the prices really aren't that much cheaper here in Gap. The crab market has become somewhat of a tourist attraction. So just take it for what it is. You know, you're here to, with your family to relax and have a good time. And uh, you know, you're gonna spend a little bit of extra for really fresh, um, high quality seafood. Aside from the crab market, you do have the uh, crab restaurants right next to the market itself. And they serve a huge variety of Western foods, uh, pasta, pizza, burgers. They also do the crab stir fry, uh, steamed crabs, lobsters, shrimps. A muck, a muck is very popular here. So if you're looking for something that isn't as um, as rustic as eating alongside the on one of the kajoh alongside the uh, the river or not the river from the ocean front there, then maybe uh, maybe one of the crab shacks you'll like better. But the prices there are a little bit more expensive. But you're gonna get some of the best seafood you've ever had in your life in those crab shacks. Now there are some really high-end restaurants like Cape West. Uh, that was the restaurant that I shot with uh, Sony, uh, not Sony, Sonny from the Best Ever Food Review Show. We shot at that restaurant and there's several more like that if you're looking for something a little bit more high-end. And uh, as far as street food goes, there's plenty of that as well. All up and down this road uh, from 4 p.m. on, this place is packed with street food. The only problem is it's only like four or five different types of street food you'll get here. You'll get um, you'll get bahet or hot dogs, uh, bokulhong, we get uh, fried uh, fried noodles and uh, roti pancakes. Uh, it is fun though to just sit out front here and people watch while eating street food and drinking Gansberg.
So this is the hotel that I stayed at, the Saravon Gap Hotel and Resort. The rooms aren't that special, but uh, pretty spacious, and it cost me only about 40 bucks. Now, the great thing about it is the location. Uh, it's right near the Gap Crab Market. Now, you do still need to tuk tuk or rent a moto, but it is really, really close. So it's probably only like less than a dollar to get there. Being that close, you can also just get your crabs and come he eat at the uh, at the hotel instead of having to get one of the kajal. Uh, I guess the best part about it is the view of the ocean and uh, the proximity to everything. It's really central to everything. But as far as other accommodations, there are plenty of them in all different price ranges. Everything from a uh, $300 a night hotel at Kanai Bong Chat to a like $15 hotel room up higher in the hills. You also get free breakfast here and Baisik Chiruk amazing okay so there it is an update on the current state of gap here in 2024 do i think it's worth it to visit well it really depends if you've been here before and it's kind of out of the way I, I don't think it's worth it it's really not much has changed and if you want some fresh seafood and you're already in Phnom Penh uh, go ahead and go to the central market and get some seafood there but if you're looking for a place that's kind of laid back, relaxed, and you're headed to Kempot anyway to go hike up in the mountains or something like that, and you want to make a day trip out to Kep, then I'd say come check out the crab market, you know, take some selfies, do some people watching. Um, I actually stayed here for two nights because I've never stayed in Kep before. And I thought it was interesting staying here over those two days. And one thing I would say is that at night, there's no nothing there's nothing happening here at night it's completely dead and as you can see right now it's a Monday and there's nobody here if you're into that that's cool uh, but yeah that's pretty much it for uh, Gap I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video if you made it this far you guys know what to do for those of you that really enjoy my work and want to help support the channel please consider donating to my beer fund by clicking the coffee link down below and I'll see you guys in the next one peace Hello. Hello. <laughs>